Am I live? There we go. I am live. I'll wait for people to come in and tell me that it's working before I uh, get too deep into this. Yeah, that should be working. Um, okay. So uh, for people watching uh, after the fact, uh, this is a live stream where I'm going to make procedural tic-tac-toe, but it's a live stream, so I'm not necessarily uh, going to narrate the whole thing. I'm just going to go into my methodology a bit. Um, so what I want to make tonight is a uh, tic-tac-toe generator uh, that not only makes the X's and the O's, but tells us if we have like a game of tic-tac-toe, like a grid. And it's filled in. I want it to say, oh, this is a winning line, or this is a winning line. Oh. I'm offline. Why am I offline? Only my laptop's offline. Connect. I don't know if I'm still live though is the issue sorry for the technical difficulties might just be on my end we'll get it working can uh, people put in the chat if uh, I'm coming through fine and uh, thank you for the for the five dollars. Hello, Scratch, Scratch. Hello, it's Scratch. Sorry, sorry for all the the technical difficulties. I'll figure it out. Um, but do let me know if it's working before I get into the whole thing. Okay, we're good. This is my first time doing a, a setup with uh, two computers. I have one for recording the or streaming, and the other one for previewing the stream. Um, okay, so let, let me just restart. Uh, so the goal for tonight is uh, it's a chill stream. That's why we got the lo-fi in the background is we're going to make a procedural tic-tac-toe board. It's going to have X's. It's going to have O's, nothing too complicated. Uh, but if there's a winning line like this one, I want it to somehow highlight it and be able to detect it. Um, and if there's multiple winning lines, then I guess it would also detect that. Um, Nothing too complicated. I want it to look nice, and I just thought of the idea, and I thought I don't necessarily know how to make it, so it'd be a good thing uh, for a live stream. Um, let's go for it. So I'm going to geo nodes up. Um, first order of business is we need to generate a 3x3 three three grid, which we already have. Right, we can make this procedurally. I guess we can make a tic-tac-toe board that goes any length, but let's go three by three. And on that, I'm going to instance points. And uh, the instances for this should be either X's or O's, right? So we populate it with one of two options. I guess we should model those. It's been so long since I've like actually modeled something. It feels weird. So I'm going to make my X by just uh, taking some edges and beveling them and then deleting these faces and if you rotate that by 45 degrees that's an X <laughs> remind you of baby driver I like that movie um, so here we have our X and I'm just gonna apply rotation and then for our O, it's just going to be a circle. Maybe we can make a higher resolution one. A circle of 64 vertices. And we just uh, extrude. Hmm. What do we, we want to extrude and then scale. And that could be our O. So we have X's and O's. And what I want to do, let me just move the camera is I want to put this uh, X and O in its own uh, collection. So I'm going to call these instance options. 
Um, and for the people, for the guy in the chat who says, can't I use the letter X and O, you're 100% right. Like the strings to curve, um, you are right. I'm just going to use this method because I didn't think about it. But good, good, good thinking there. I like the uh, alternate route. If anybody wants to make this alongside me, feel free. Might be interesting to see the uh, different results. Uh, maybe I'll keep the camera in the bottom right corner. Makes more sense. Um, okay, so we have our instance options, which I can just move out of the side, off to the side. This is going to be our procedural. And what I want to do is bring in this collection to be instanced. So I take that, I make it the instance, I make it my instance options, and we separate children, and we also reset children to make sure they're over there. Beautiful. Okay. By the way, probably a good idea to save. Tic-tac-toe, more like TTT -t -t or 3T. I like that more. Um, okay, so we have X's and O's. Now we just need to randomize them. So we can pick instance. Right now it's using the index. Let's uh, randomize that. Between 0 and 1. Okay, so th th this is going to show all possible games of uh, tic-tac-toe that we can play. And for the people who don't know uh, what you're doing here, thank you for hopping in. So I think uh, this should definitely be a parameter because we want to be able to control the uh, tic-tac-toe board. And let's also, I'm going to scale these down a little. And let's also uh, create a nice little grid while we're here. So I want to add some loop cuts, take it, scale it down, and this is just to make the grid itself. I'm going to select these and bevel just by a bit. Beautiful. And then we just get rid of these interior faces. Okay, so there we go. Now we have a, a procedural thing. This isn't the hard part. The hard part is going to be the detection of which one is an actual uh, winning streak. And I do have an idea for that, but... Okay, we'll get into that in a second. That's going to be the complicated part. I'm thinking we could use an accumulate field node, but I think I might just do it manually. And also, before we start with the detection, may as well just make it look good, right? So we can add some materials. Nice thing about doing this as a collection instead of the strings to curves like somebody is recommending is we can add materials without the set material um, node, I believe. So let's open up the shader editor and make one of these. So let's see, is this changing? Yeah, we'll make one. I feel like... I feel like in my head the X's have to be red, so the circles should probably be blue or something. X's are blue, or sorry, circles are red, X's are blue. And then the grid can be just a, a plain white without any BSDF nonsense. There we go. So we have our procedural object. Yeah, buddy. Okay, now for the complicated part. <laughs> I mean, look at that. This is only uh, five nodes. So I'm trying to think. If we want this to detect a winning line, what is a winning line? It's this one. Let me make that visible. It's that one. It's that one. It's that one. It's basically any line where we have the same randomized value each time because each of these instances is corresponding with a zero or a one. So in other words, if X's are ones, then a winning line is one where we have one plus one plus one is three. Or let me get, if we have this, we have zero plus zero plus zero is zero. This is not a winning line because you have one plus zero plus one is two. In other words, we have the possibility zero, one, two, three, this one and this one's the one we care about so i'm thinking we just det detect something like that 
Oh, thank you, uh, Sam Juice. I, I, I'm seeing the chats going crazy over X's and O's. We'll see who wins. I'm I'm more of a uh, O fan myself, but whatever. Um, so we we just need to make a, a detection little thing, and I I think again I think I'll do it manually. Um, for this now. If we want coordinates, like saying which one is the top left, this one, this one, we need to know what that coordinate system is. Now, I think since we're using this grid, I believe it's just going to be the index. So zero is negative 0.5, negative 0.5, which is down here. Is that right? I guess there's one, one easy way to find out. We're going to delete geometry by index. Yeah, so you can see here as I make the index bigger, you can see how this is populating it. So let me actually fill in some coordinates. This is zero, zero, or a pair of boobs, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be zero, three. And then it hops over, which I guess makes sense. One, zero, and then it keeps going. But I guess what matters is the order of the index. So we have one, two, three, <laughs> four. And hopefully these annotations are going to be useful later on. See, that that's the strange thing about this. It's kind of like the snake weaving thing that hops in and out. Yeah. <laughs> Battle's going strong. So let, let's try to do one version of a winning row. So let's see if we can get one, two, three to be detected. So I need a way to actually know the values. And I think there's a perfect node for this. Field at index. Because it's going to let us put in an index. And, and know what the field is. I mean, I, it's stupid, but I think it makes sense. So we want to know the integer at a point at index. Well, actually, the indexing starts at zero. I don't know if anybody mentioned that. Is it really? It's zero, one, two. So, so let's put a little subtract one up here. <laughs> so let's see if we can do this properly. So I'm going to use three field index nodes. at 0, 1, and 2, and let's add them together. And again, we want to know if this is equal to 0 or 3. So we say equal, equal to 0, or equal to 3. With epsilon 0.01, that's fine. And for an OR operation, we just add add those. And this should give us the output of this line right here, right? Because we have the field at 0, 1, and 2. Geometry nodes is kind of a replacement for animation nodes. It's kind of a different thing because it doesn't have loops and stuff like this. So in the sense, animation nodes has more features, uh, but geometry nodes is more integrated and it's not an add-on. So geometry nodes at some point should have everything animation nodes had. That would be ideal. Like we don't want to need animation nodes and also sphere, sphere chalk, that too. Um, so we have this at index zero, one, and two. We're adding. We're equaling. Hopefully, this should give us the correct thing. And uh, we could test that. So remember, this is the whole idea. We can uh, test this by adding in a grid, joining them, and doing some kind of some some kind of boolean operation. Or some kind of switch, maybe? Yeah. So I'm going to make two grids. One of them is going to be super tiny. So here's one grid, and here's the other. And we'll have it be switched dependent on 
depending on this. Now, why does it not like that? It doesn't like it because it's not deterministic. I don't know why it doesn't seem to like that. Oh, because we need to... Uh, this just became way more complicated. Because we need to capture the attribute. Right? We need to capture the field. And use this. I don't know if that makes any difference. But I think I think that's necessary because we're we're caring about the randomization of the grid, I believe. And I don't know if that's gonna solve our switch issue or not. No, it doesn't seem to like that. Yeah, and it's not updating either. If anybody knows, put in the chat. But let's see. This really should give us a deterministic thing. If not, we can always go fancy and use the attribute statistic node, but that just feels like overkill. Let's try to do it just to make sure that it can work. Index equal. I guess this is why it's a late night stream. Got to be able to figure this stuff out. So I want to evaluate the grid at index zero using the randomized attribute. And we need three of these. So I'm just going to get rid of all this if it doesn't work. We need three of these. So we use the same geometry and we're using the same attribute. I think the difference between this and the other one is it gives a deterministic non-field answer. So mm. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if it does what I think it does. So now we just add these. And again, we see if it's equal to, and I guess I could have kept the nodes from before. Hopefully this does what I want it to. If not, I'm at a bit of a loss. Okay, there we go. It's accepting our switch. Beautiful. <laughs> so now, let's uh, see if we can detect a line where we have a winning thing. Otherwise, it wouldn't change anyways. Okay, so this is a winning line. We have a bunch of zeros. And did it switch? I think it did. It became bigger. Yeah. Yeah, it did. It did work. Okay, we, we have a working uh, thing. So I know it just looks like I just put a clusterfuck worth of nodes down. I'll explain it in a second. I really will. But first, let me just uh, test that it works the way I expect it to. So the way I want you to think about this is here we have a big grid. It's going to be big if we have a win on this line, and it's going to be small if we don't. So let's see. There we go. We don't have a win. It became small. Now it became big. Small and a big again. There we go. So the line of thinking works. Now we just need to generalize this. And uh, somebody's saying go with booleans. That might make sense. I think it's the... I mean, in some sense, it's the same thing. I'm just using zeros and ones explicitly instead of booleans and i'm saying instead of having three booleans in a row like three switches i'm saying add them to three but the logic is the same but i see what you're saying so let me uh, clean up the nodes because basically now what we need to do is streamline this and actually what we can do instead of uh, having a switch uh, for this because like what I wanted to do is to show where the fucking you know thing is so I'm gonna make a line showing the hit and I'm gonna transform this over like that <laughs> and I want to delete geometry 
dependent on the selection, but inverted, I believe. Multiply by negative one, add one. So let's see if this works. So this should only give us a line if we have a, a win in either X's or O's. Yep, that, that is working. Okay, beautiful. I'm going to erase some of these annotations because they're getting in the way. Make a draw grease pencil stroke around the winner. Is that possible? I have no idea if that's possible. So let me explain what we have going on here so that it makes a bit more sense. Basically, we have a grid. The grid is a three by three, you know, plane or an array. Uh, we're then instancing X's and O's randomly based on this random value. And then what we want to do is now have the detection, which is the hard part. And I'm saying, let's isolate this line indexes zero, one, and two. And if it's a hit, in other words, if these are all X's or all O's, our random value should add to three if we were to val zero or three, if we were to evaluate it here. And then I'm checking if it is equal to that. And if so, uh, you know, put down the grid at this transform position. So that that's the idea. And again, this isn't a tutorial. This is a let's make a thing. This is uh, normally what I do before uh, tutorials. I uh, demo it for myself. But uh, what we can do with this now is turn it into one big node group is the idea. And then we can make it a lot faster, I believe. So we can take all of this and we wanna put all this in here as well and turn it into a geo nodes group, which cleans it up quite a bit, but we need access to these numbers that we're punching in, because that's kind of the whole point. So I'm gonna make these things that we can access. Yeah. So now it's detecting index zero, one, and two, and it's telling us whether or not to delete the geometry. And maybe this is something we can also turn into a, uh... I don't know if I want to turn it into a node group though, because I want to be able to expose the position of this. So for now, let's keep it like this. And let's uh, clean up a little. You know, in the grand scheme of things, this isn't too complicated. It's just the logic that uh, matters here. So this is what we have so far. <laughs> yeah, we got to remake a uh, Blunder game engine so that we don't have to go back to an old version of Blunder to use it. But look at that. that. That's pretty cool, I think. So now we just need to see if we can repeat the process. And it should just be as easy as duplicating this, connecting in the same things. So let's see, what do we need access to? We need geometry to go in here, and we need our attribute to go in here. And then instead of 0, 1, and 2, let's say we're detecting this line, which is 4 five and six we then want to i'm gonna move this over because now we're detecting this line we want to check if that works and let's see it seems that it's working so far yep that is working exactly how i predict oh wait why is it giving us a uh, a hit there it's because it's not zero, one, and two. It's three, four, and five. That's what it is. Yep, somebody just commented. Thank you, Edis257. There's a 30 second delay. Um, so it, it will take 30 seconds for me to like be like, oh yes, this is the thing. But you guys are observant, you caught it before me. And that, that that's good that people are actually following and can understand what the fuck I'm talking about. 
Okay, so, so far it is working. Don't forget indexing starts at zero, which was the issue. Okay. And let's just make one more copy of this. And by the way, what? why did I copy this index node? I did not need to do that. I could just do it here. Consolidate that. Let's make one more copy. And then we'll be done. I mean, there, let's see how many options are there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and two diagonals. So there's only eight of these that we have to do, really. Which isn't too bad, really. And we could also consolidate the grid nodes. It might be a bit overkill, but why not? Okay. In this case, we want to, hopefully we'll get good at connecting these. Connect geometry, then connect index, then connect the random attribute. It's hard to even see what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> That's how you know you've gone too deep into the notes. Um, so if this is three, four, five, then this is six, seven, eight. Not 78, but eight. And let's see, the position of this should be 0.5 positive on the X axis. Like that, view it. And let's see if it is working. So we care about the third column. There we go. And now let's get three X's just to make sure. Yep, that is working. Hello, Soto. Welcome back to the stream. Soto, uh, for people who don't know, was uh, the fearless leader of the Discord server, um, which, which was a hard kind of call to answer because... I remember when I opened up the Discord server, I did not expect the amount of just racist me. This one guy had like a folder of just awful things <laughs> that he would just post immediately and I didn't have an admin team. So Soto was the head of that. And now uh, he's doing uh, Clinton Jones Discord, if not others as well. So big up to Soto in the chat. Um, okay. So now we've done all the columns. So let's just take that, put it inside a frame. Um, and let's do all the rows. And then let's do the two diagonals. And then we should have a detection thing. And then maybe we can make it look a bit fancier. But yeah, that, that, that looks good. Blender... Hello, CG Matter. I'm new to this geometry nodes in Blender. Is there any tutorial series for geo nodes, like explaining the whole nodes uses, or do you have an existing video? Okay, so uh, Ian Cigar. I don't do names. So if I pronounced it wrong, whatever. You know, what are you going to do? Um, asks, is there like a, a way to learn geometry nodes from scratch? Um... I think Blender Foundation just released like a thing for Blender Cloud that should be a fundamentals course. Maybe I, I haven't seen it, but I'd recommend that maybe because th it seems to be from beginning. Um, I might make a geometry nodes from beginner thing at some point. Really what I do is I just do a bunch of projects with geometry nodes. And if you watch those, you'll like get the lay of the land, but it's not literally from zero to hero kind of thing. So I'd recommend the Blender Cloud course, I guess. I haven't seen it. So that that's my comment on that. And my comment on the rows is that we need some. <laughs> so let's try a row, uh, which will be a slightly different logic. But uh, I, I fundamentally the same thing. So let's say we're testing out this row. So remember, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it should just be that we're adding 3 each time. So now we're evaluating the row. And how do we want to check the row, or how do we want to present the row? Well, we could rotate this by 90 degrees and then move it upwards. So let's see if that works. 
So we're looking again at this row up here. Yep. X's work. And O's work. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we're actually almost done. So we need two more of these. This one's going to be 0, 1. And then we know we just add 3 each time. 4, 7. So again, um, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah. And for people who are just hopping in, we did weird indexing where it starts at 0, 1, 2. Then it goes back down to 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, etc. That's why I'm doing all the weirdness. Attribute. So this one should be the bottom row. So it's going to be 0, 3, 6. It's kind of like doing a Sudoku almost. Oh, wait. Did I skip a row? Oh, I just like updated over myself. 1, 4, 7 is what it was. And then this is the middle. Let's do one more. And then this one is zero, three, six. Geometry index attribute couldn't be easier well could be a bit easier and this one goes down here okay let's see if it works we got to check all the rows okay looks good so far i need some o's on the middle oh we are missing o's on the middle what did I mess up? I didn't connect it. There we go. Can you try doing it with the accumulate field after? No, <laughs> but I can tell you how I would. So what the accumulate field node does is it literally accumulates. It sums up. It adds a certain field, uh, which would be useful for this because we have zeros and ones. So it would add those. And basically, it's the same thing. Like we have this uh, node group to check. You know, we add these values and check if it's equal to zero or three. Accumulate field should make that simpler. But again, the reason I wanted to do these attribute statistics is to capture the attribute for some reason. I was having some issues. So that's what I did. Um, so this is, but that's how you would use the accumulate field. So we have that. And now finally, let's do the diagonals, which uh, indexing is a bit more complicated, but in theory, it should be the same thing. So let's see, we're doing this diagonal. That will be zero. Let's put that in zero. And then zero, one, two, three, four, and then eight. So we add fours. There's an interesting kind of symmetry to this because you you, you kind of add four in this kind of knight's move kind of thing, if you can almost imagine that. More like a bishop move. But you have to go up and over. I don't know. In my head, it kind of looks like a knight move. Either way, uh, we connect that. And we need uh, two of these. This other diagonal should be two, four, six. So now we're adding two. Interesting. Okay, so we do that. Connect geometry. Connect indices. And then finally, connect attribute. And let's uh, manipulate these uh, grids to be correct. So for this one, instead of rotating it by 90 to make it, you know, a row or a column, we could do 45 degrees. And this should be the other way. Negative 45 degrees this way. And 45 degrees the other way. And yep, we are, we're just checking to see if the diagonals work. And one thing we can do with these... And it's good that I made these their own grids, is we can make them a bit longer. Because the diagonal takes more distance. 
So something like that. So now this should give us all the hits. So let's uh, check. Yeah, look at that. One thing I'd like is this for it to be kind of like an overlay on top of it. Um, right now, it's kind of like the X's and the O's are on top of everything. I want the bars to be on top. So to do that, it's literally all of these kind of joined with the other. So if I, if I separate them like I did right here, is I could just shift them up by a tiny bit and then that is fixed. Beautiful. Um, okay, now let's make this thing look a bit prettier. So I'm thinking let's uh, make these lines twice as thin. So I did the diagonals and now I need to do everything else because I separated them. Boom. So that already looks a lot better. Let's do a um, an animation for this that evolves over time. Yeah, that's nice. And I guess that's kind of the essence of it but we can make it kind of nice and an Eevee. And maybe these uh, grids should have a color. So I'm going to set material to the white material. Eh, no, maybe they should be like yellow or something. So I'm going to use a new material. those yellow or I could just use an RGB and then I believe the grid and nah, I like the order of it now so look at that now the cool thing about this is you could totally generalize it to a 4x4 four four, but it'd be like hell to do it unless you wrote like you turned this into kind of like a script or an algorithm instead of like this manual thing but you could, you could kind of, I mean, the, the last step of the automation is just kind of putting in these indice numbers yourself. Give a mission shader and bloom. I will for the lines. I will for the lines. So I'm making the lines brighter. And since it's Eevee, we can make it bloom. I think that's a good addition. Make the color alternate between red and blue. Players are looking for those colors. Now I think, I'm trying to think if there's anything left to do here. This is kind of the, this was kind of the gist of what I wanted to make. But let's make it a bit fancier. So I'm going to go to my X model. Not X as in I broke up with her, but just the letter X. Let's make it look a bit fancier. Add a bit of a bevel. So now these X's have kind of rounded corners. And the O, not much we can do in terms of making the O fancy, I don't think. I think uh, one thing, though, is uh, every project needs a title. So I'm going to add a string to curve. We can call this, I mean, earlier I was calling it TTT, tic-tac-toe, 3T, or titty, 3T. It's the 3T machine. And then we take that, we're going to fill the curve. You can see now we have some text. Let's do text with a better font. Yeah, 3T machine. Center it. Uh, 
and give it the uh, yellow material. So what we have made, what I've made and you've watched, is a modifier that does what? You take any mesh, Suzanne, you apply my Geonodes modifier, and it will give you a, a tic-tac-toe generator. <laughs> um, let me hide the original so that you can actually see it. Oh, I need to plug in the... Uh, the um, the fields well it's almost that <laughs> definitely works with our uh, setup that we made originally but I'm pretty happy with that um, I'll, I'll answer some questions for a bit while this is playing in the background if anybody has questions, feel free to ask. Um, okay, why Blender and not any other 3D software? Uh, Blender's free. <laughs> uh, th that's kind of the big one. Um, how long did it take you to learn everything about Geo that I know now about Geonodes? Um, it's kind of a process, and the interesting thing is you watch these tutorials and you're like, oh, he knows all these things. It's more like I figure something out, or maybe I piece something together. And then I make a tutorial about it. So it's kind of like this selection bias where you assume that I know how to make a whole bunch of stuff, but really I'm showing you what I know how to do. So if I haven't made something, maybe it's because I don't know how to do it. But uh, you fiddle around and you think about an idea, like this tic-tac-toe thing, and you think about what pieces do I need to make this thing. And you saw that process live here in this case. Mean art critique eventually. If you're part of the Discord, you'll know that I uh, summoned for more art. I still haven't put it together, though. Um, I think that's it. I'm not seeing many other questions. But it does seem like there's a need or an urge for people to like learn the basics of geometry nodes. So I'll maybe consider doing a tutorial series or something like that. But um, I think that's the essence of it. How have you been? better trying i'm trying to do better overall with mood and everything so i'd say i'd say better than it has been and uh yes i like cheeseburgers okay i think that i think that's a wrap okay wait what pc components do you use um i use a 3090 for a graphics card one of those insane intel i7 like 12 core things for the cpu um Okay, we're getting more questions. Uh, so another person's basically asking, how did I get good at Geonodes? Which is basically the same question as before. Uh, I think the real answer is I was a math major. So I was already kind of trained to think mathematically. And then you just kind of pick up the nodes. But the concepts are already there. Um... And yeah, so somebody said it'd be cool if I made it so that this evolved by turn. So somebody puts an X and then somebody puts an O. The issue with that is I can make them appear in order or like in any order I want. But to do it in a way where somebody would actually play it, like somebody would start in the middle and somebody responds in a way that makes sense. That takes way more logic because to, to make a move that makes sense is kind of a more complicated question. But yeah, I would have liked to do that. But th this is definitely something. And what time is it uh, where I'm at? It's at 10 p.m. It's not that late. But I've been uh, doing this uh, trip uh, that we cut a bit short and I'm tired. I've slept for five hours over the last two days and walked like 40 miles. Uh, which I had fun doing, but it's like drained me. But I was feeling inspired to do a, um, a uh, tutorial. Or not a tutorial, like a, a, a project. So, and I haven't really known what to make tutorials about recently, but this idea just came up. So I'm like, I'll do it. Um, 
Okay. Oh, it's 5 a.m. where you are. Yeah. Well, late nights, later, later night stream for some of us than others. Um, 4 a.m. for Soto. I think I'll wrap it up here because we did the, uh, we did the deed. It kind of, lo it kind of looks like a monster, <laughs> especially once you know that a lot of these nodes are this node group inside. Uh, but it only took like 45 minutes to make, if not less, if you discount all the question answering. Um, I'll, I'll consider doing more live streams in the future. The only thing about them that's a bit weird is I'm not like putting on my tutorial voice. Hey guys, welcome back to another Blunder tutorial. Like that's a different thing. And I'm, I'm not too comfortable yet with just kind of talking uh, the way I am right now. It's kind of a different vibe. But if people are into it and like the music in the background, I'm listening to it too. So it's not like just empty, you know, in my room, like I have the, the music as well. Um, I, it's like something I want to like get more used to if I'm going to stream more, especially if they're longer streams. Okay. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm going to wrap it up here and, uh, I'll do more streams in the future if it feels, uh, correct. And, uh,